All right, welcome to the Norfew Sports Podcast. I'm here with um, Landon Ogle, and I'm here with Jalen Stoles. We also got Mr. Thomas in here. Um, tonight we're looking forward to a pretty good matchup with Seymour. Um, I think we won the last game. How do you, how you feeling going into that, Jalen? I'm feeling pretty good, you know. Coming off a win against Clark County, district win. Got to get another one tonight. Hopefully it plans out well. Yeah, I know. It's been a kind of up and down season, you know. You kind of lost to GP and Fulton, two really tough games. Kind of bounced back against Carter and then Cock County. So kind of looking to get, you know, a little bit of a run going there. Um, what have you uh, most enjoyed about this season so far? Obviously winning, but uh, first thing is just really team growing together. You know, I came into a role of I didn't play last year a lot, so playing this year and then learning everybody. I, of course, I'm friends with everybody, but coming in and filling the role has been pretty cool in my opinion. So, Yeah, I mean, I can definitely tell just from, you know, a viewer's perspective of this team kind of – you can tell everybody's really good friends with everybody, you know. I see you and Richard and Blaine always playing Fortnite together, you know. And that, you know, it may not seem like much, but I think, you know, building that relationship off the court kind of helps you guys in game too. Definitely. Yeah, so uh what do you uh what do you <laughs> What do you think, Landon? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you said from a viewer's pers- perspective, like everybody looks closer and Losing Corbin and Sebastian, like, two big key pieces from last year's team and Jalen coming in and filling that role, I mean, that's pretty huge. And, you know, he's got to fill a bigger role next year because Richard's leaving. And like he said, he's going to play the five. So we'll see how that goes. Are you excited for, you know, obviously, you know, you're a great player, but um, kind of moving into a new position when trying to fill the shoes of somebody that's, you know, one of Norfew's top players that we've had, you know, how does that feel? I um, mean, it's not going to be easy, obviously, but uh, I'm not going to say I can do it, which I feel like I can, but it's also a big roll off. There's obviously going to be bad games and good games, so I think it'll plan out good uh, for the next two years. Yeah, like I said, I, I you know, I look at our team right now, and uh, I think even in our starting lineup, we only have one senior, which is Richard. Um, I do feel like this team has the opportunity to really thrive next year. Um, Richard is a great loss, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, time for Norfie to kind of grow a little bit. And uh, I think you're kind of the guy to start off with that. Um, How does, like, playing football uh, relate to your skills on basketball? Well, I, I believe it helps with footwork. It's helped me a lot, actually. So that and then just stamina, it helps with a lot of stamina and just being able to get quicker and all that. It it translates a lot to the basketball court, I feel like, especially obviously you're getting stronger, like I said, stamina and the footwork. So it just translates good. Yeah, like uh, I know Richard, you know, when I watch him play, you know, it's he, he doesn't always have the speed advantage against other centers or a lot of times in, even in height. But, you know, he has great footwork. Um, that that's one of the most important parts of basketball right now. I feel. Um, but yeah, as we look forward in the season, do you guys feel like you're ready to make an impact in a, any sort of tournaments or feel good about your guys' future? I believe so. I feel like we got we got a good run as long as we went out in the season and obviously do good in district. I feel like we got a good path to get to sub state, state, and all that. Yeah, I mean, I know it's a tough matchup when you play a team like Fulton or GP, but uh, how much do you think you learned from, you know, playing a state champ, playing a team that, you know, knows how to get it done? Do you feel like it was a good learning experience for you guys? I feel like it was a great learning experience, actually, because it shows that there's just people out there. Obviously, there's people going to be better than you, but if you learn from that, you can learn the ways to be better like as a team. And if you pursue those ways, I feel like it'll all come together. Right. I mean, like I said, you uh, you and, uh, like, Blaine, I, I feel like you guys really aren't afraid to go up against those guys who are, you know, highly ranked in the state of Tennessee. And, you know, that takes a lot of courage to be able to say, like, what up, Ty Glasper? I'm, you know, I don't care how good everybody says you are. I'm going to play my heart out and um, put everything I got out in the court. Um, yeah, 
like Dylan was saying, you got, you know, you've got so much confidence to just be a sophomore. And that's, you know, how is the, from going from a freshman, you know, barely playing, like you said, to a sophomore starting, how do the coaches help you, like, develop into that role? I feel like they, they've helped a lot, actually. I'm, I'm glad they believe in me and what I can do. It's just I got to fill the roles that they think I can, like, the person I, they think I can be. So it hasn't been easy, but I feel like I've learned a lot from it. So, yeah. I mean, even when you were coming into, uh, you know, varsity basketball, um, I, I remember, like, last year, you know, when I would talk to guys on the team, they were like, man, Jalen, he's going to be impressive. And I remember watching, like, a JV game, and you were you were beyond better than a lot of those guys on the court at that time. Um, so, I mean, sort of like your, like, arrival to, like, varsity has kind of been awesome to watch because, like I said, sort of like – Wimbin Yama, when he came into the league, we knew he was going to be great. Um, so, yeah, that three, saw a lot of that in JV. Um, are you scared of, like, when you move to the five that it's going to, you know, decrease the amount of, like, threes you're going to be able to take? I mean, I don't think it'll change a lot because I, they know I can shoot a lot. No no offense to Richard. I'm not saying he can't shoot, but he can sometimes. It's just the point. That's not his game. I feel like I'm more like a stretch well, I obviously shoot a lot more threes than I'm in the paint, but I feel like it's not going to go away from that. It'll decline a little bit, but I don't think we'll go away from that a lot. I think they'll take it as an advantage. I agree. So, What's a, uh, like, I mentioned Wimbenyama, but uh, what's a, like, NBA player that you kind of look up to when it comes to, like, play style? Um, I know you like Kevin Durant a lot. Definitely. I, you've mentioned it before. I, I do love KD. It's my it's my idol. So I try and try and make my game a lot like his. Obviously, it's not as good, but I try you'll get and, there. Yeah, I try and model myself as much as I can. I also like uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander. He's in the NBA right now. He's playing really good right now. I just feel like he plays. He knows how to play at his own pace. Obviously, running the one. I don't run the one, but I feel like. It, just having the abilities to is obviously good. So, see when I played in, you know, the boys and girls club lead, I always wanted to be like Kawhi. I always said, when you shoot the ball, you got to shoot it like you have big hands, because when you have a good grip on that ball, it goes anywhere you want it. Right, Landon? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Jalen, you know, like you said, there's a big game tonight. Like. How do you guys think you match up against Seymour? And what do you guys think you have advantages against them? I think we match up. I'm not gonna say well, but they do have a couple good pieces. Obviously, they don't. They have big men, but I don't think they can stop Richard. I mean, there's not a lot of people that can, to be honest. But I feel like we match up well as long as we play good defense tonight and do good on offense. I feel like we could pull the win out. So. Yeah, Seymour can. Uh, they can let it fly from three and. Uh... I, I believe that they're capable of winning. Um, they're capable of having, you know, a great program, but I, I think they're still a pretty young squad, you know? Definitely. And uh, I know that they got that, uh, like, a Golden Hayes, I think his name is. Um, I think he's only, like, a sophomore. Yeah, but he's a sophomore. Just the jump he made from freshman year to sophomore year is kind of insane. Um, a lot like you, honestly, um, to where they kind of – thrived in the, their own at the varsity level. Definitely. He's a good player. Obviously, they have Cam Solages. He's a good shooter. They all they can all shoot it from three, like you said, which is not easy to guard, especially when they all shoot contested. But like you said, Hayes took a big role. He's been one of my friends, too, so we like to go back and forth with it. So I'm glad he's gotten gotten the role better and all that. So Yeah, I remember uh, pre-Seymour uh, game, uh, here, um, a lot of people, you know, were talking to me about uh, Cam. Cam was one of the guys that, like, they were just highlighted how good he was. But um, Blaine really has been defending these, like, you know, highly rated high school basketball players. He's been defending them really well recently. Sure. Uh, um, is there a guy on the court that, you know, you feel like takes the uh, lead when it comes to the defense? Uh, Blaine and Richard, to be honest. Like you said, Blaine's guarding 
everybody's best player every night, which I'm glad he can do. Him and Boyvin are great at doing that. Everybody on the team can def can defend, but I feel like with his long arms and everything, he takes part in leading that, like you said. So. Yeah, one thing I like about his game is uh, you can sort of see uh, anybody who's guarding him, they might be in foul trouble by the end of the night. It's a common occurrence to where you kind of hard not to foul him. And, uh, you know, I, I like a – one thing I want to mention is, like, just the uh, class that you're in, which is 2026, right? Correct. We've got a lot of great players. I Definitely. mean, you got Peyton White, who comes off the bench, shoots it whenever he wants, Ben Pickle, same thing. I mean, these guys are really great, you know. How do you feel going into, you know, looking forward to next year and then the year after that to where – where do you think Northview's going to be? Um, I mean, obviously we're losing Richard, like you said. That's a big piece. But I feel like Ben and Peyton, they're already good pieces right now coming off the bench. So I feel like the next two years we should be good, to be honest. I feel like we, we could be the same or we could be better. I don't see us declining at all. So I think right now what Northview's kind of seeing is it, it gets really – awkward at times when you have five guys on the court at the same time that are so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when you find that level of, okay, we're in sync. We're in we're in a smooth motion of, you know, letting it fly, driving it in, you know, that's when Norfu's really at its best. And I think when you look at that like Knox Central game, that was one of those games where we really couldn't go wrong at that game. Um, and that was probably one of the best games I've seen in my like life being a Norfolk Cougar. Um, what was that win like for you guys? It was pretty great, actually. We came in the game. I, I think we were picked as – we we weren't picked to win at all because of, they are having a good season so far. And I feel like us stepping up and taking that win, it really like opened people's eyes of how good we could be because we had a great game as a team. We were all in sync that game, like you said. And when – I feel when we're in sync, all in sync together, we're one of the best teams. So I do too. I mean, like I said, basketball. You know, I think every time Northview's had a rough game, and I'm commentating on it, I always kind of mention the fact that, like, well, you don't want to be playing your best basketball right now. You know, mm -hmm. it's a tournament sport, and I feel like we have the opportunity to, you know sort of click at the right time. Um, and I feel like it's kind of a ticking time bomb to when that happens for our team. Definitely. What do you have to say, Logan? You've been awfully quiet. So, you know, everybody has like a pregame ritual. What do you do for your pregame? Well, first thing I do is I, I'm either eat – obviously, I go – I got to eat before the game. I got to eat before the game. So, first thing I do is I – wherever – I either go eat with my parents or I'm going to eat with either, obviously, Dylan, Harker Road, or, or Peyton, or Ben. All of my uh, friends are in my grade. But uh, after I go eat, if it's at home, we come back. Uh, if there's a JV game, I'm obviously watching that. As soon as the JV game ends, I'm going right and getting ready for the game. Gotta get, I got to stretch for a good 15 minutes. Got to get my body loose, prepared. And then I go get some shots up. Gotta, obviously, got to start with form shots because you just go in there chucking up three points. It's not going to be a good night for you. But after form shots, get done. We come back. And I sit there and I listen to music, get ready for the game. So, What's the go-to music? I know Richard's got young boy. What you got? I listen to – his name's Rio, Young OG. That's, that's the music I like listening to. That's my type of my type of music. So, Can you explain to the podcast, like, what do you mean by form shots? Because like, I, I think I have a vision in mind. But. Well, I start – you got to – I hit – I start – I've been doing this my whole, my whole life. I start two feet away. Obviously, gotta get, you got to make ten in a row from left side, right side, and the middle. And you take uh, a couple steps back, you got knocked down 10 in a row. And then obviously you get to the free throw line, you got hit. I start with five five free throws in a row. And then I go three point line, I got hit five three pointers in every single spot, you know. That's that's what I've done my whole life and I feel like it's helped me a lot, so. 
How old were you when you started playing basketball? I started when I was four. Yeah, I started playing upward when I was four, and then I've grown since then. So, Do you ever play upward, Landon? No, I didn't. I actually, whenever I was younger, I actually did play with Jalen. We was kind of dominant, not going to lie. But that, that team was pretty good, I'm not going to lie. I had my days in upward. When I was in sixth grade, I I didn't make the Northview <laughs> basketball team. So I, I joined upward because I just wanted to play. And I think I averaged like 10 a game. I used I, mean, I wasn't bad for a fifth grader. Not Northview good, but I was <laughs> upward good. Yeah, upward basketball. Do you feel like that helped your game out? Like any? Definitely. I feel like. Obviously, I was young and little kids don't like listening, but I feel like going there and just learning from, obviously, older guys that have played and coached already, I feel like it's helped me a lot. So, You play travel ball at all? I do. I play for uh, A65 Elite. We, we do travel a lot. Like last year, I think we went to – we played in a lot of big shots turnaround. I don't know if you all know what that is. It's like a big – Big thing, and they go around the country. But we, I play at Rock Hill in South Carolina, and Spartanburg, South Carolina. Traveled out west. No, it's just a there. It's a fun experience playing because you get to see the competition around the world, and not just in Tennessee. So, does that cut into the football season at all, or is that just kind of a summer, it, spring thing? A lot of people, you know, aren't familiar with that. It does cut into football season a little bit which I'm glad AAU's on the weekends because I get football time during the week and I'm obviously working out and doing spring practice and all that. And then once it comes weekend, I'm traveling, playing. So I'm always doing something, but I'm so you, glad I am. So you got the full schedule all year going. Oh, yeah. I'm, I don't have off off days at all, which I'm not – I don't really care about that. I, I like doing stuff. I don't like sitting around, so. Yeah, that's, that's something, you know, it's always good to be involved and stuff and never – have a break like that it just keeps you going definitely so uh what's your like goal what's the end goal with basketball for you well m- my main goal not just for basketball you know because I play football too I I really want to go to college to play either sport that's my main goal right now obviously once I if I do exceed that obviously it's going to be more after that but I obviously want to go to college and play sports so yeah, I mean it's a, uh, it's tough, but like, you know, you you being only a sophomore coming into your own as a one of our top players in basketball and receiving wise, you were you were great this year. So um, I, I think you got a shot. I think I really do, and that's not easy to say about somebody. You know, it's a hard it's a hard thing to get into, but I feel like you have that right mindset and that right. Uh, discipline to do it. Definitely, it's just the uh, the point of like a lot of people once they like it, like last year I didn't play a lot in either sports, so I kind of like discouraged me, but it didn't like stop me from believing I could do it. Because obviously you got to wait your time. It's, it's going to all plan out. So you know we've been talking mostly about basketball and football. Who do you model yourself after? I I really don't have any. Obviously, I watch a lot of tight ends because that's my position. So I just try and take bits and pieces from all of the good tight ends in the uh, NFL. One person I could say is Travis Kelsey. I think I play a lot like him, but obviously not as good, like I said. But I try and take bits and pieces from everybody and try and improve my game. I don't know if you're playing as good as Travis right now. Definitely. I mean, (laughs) if so, you might be dating Taylor. (laughs) Speaking of that, who do you have in the Super Bowl? I like the Chiefs and I like Travis Kelsey and Pat Mahomes, but I kind of want the 49ers to win. I feel like Brock Purdy's got a – he's been playing good. I feel like he's got a lot to prove, especially being the last pick. So, yeah. What, what do you think about, like, all, like, the conspiracy theories where it's, like – I heard, you know, the Super Bowl color logo thing. What do you think about those? I actually, I believed in the logo thing. And so, I, I had the Ravens winning the whole thing, but once they lost, I felt like – is more, more like a setup, I guess, to people to believe in that. So, you know, they said, um, they said that um, it might have the theory got messed up because twenty twenty four is a leap year. 
And you know what the other leap year was? 2020. 2020. And the and the Super Bowl was Chiefs 49ers. What do you guys think about the Super Bowl? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just it's really hard to bet against Patrick Mahomes. Like it really is. Um, 49ers almost lost to the Lions. Not really look didn't really look that great in the NFC Championship. I, I just think Pat Mahomes is the deciding factor of it all. Man, I'm not going to lie. You know, I can't really pick the 49ers cuz I, I can't pick the 49ers either. You know, uh, division rival, so I, I I just can't. I mean, I'm a I'm a Browns guy. I I don't know what it's like to be in the Super Bowl or nothing, so I'm a Jets fan, so I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah, 19 what was it? 68 Joe Joe Namath? <laughs> it was Joe back Namath, in the day. Yeah. My grandma is from New York, and uh, she she uh, has like she's like the biggest Jets fan I've ever met, and um, she she used to have season tickets. Said they cost eighty dollars in nineteen sixty in the nineteen sixties for season tickets to the Jets, and she would go to training camp, and she has signed everything by like the whole Super Bowl roster. Um. But my grandma, when she tells me the story of Super Bowl three against the Baltimore Colts, she'll be like, you know, they said, Joe Namath said, they they said it was the largest, you know, spread in Super Bowl history. You know, the Jets were massive underdogs, and Joe Namath got in that interview, and he said, oh, we're going to beat the crap out of them. We're going to win. My grandma loves Joe Namath. <laughs> loves him to death. That one Jets Super Bowl, my grandma holds very dearly. <laughs> Yeah, I got I got family up in New York as well, and they make fun fun of me. They say, "Why are you a Jets fan? You should be a Giants fan." I said, "Always been a Jets fan. That's how you know you're a true fan. If you're a fan of the Jets or the Mets, you know you're a true fan." Yeah, dude. I, like I said, I mean, as a Cleveland guy, I haven't really seen much success other than LeBron. That's it. That's all we got. And there ain't nothing to see if you're a Mets fan either. Unfortunately, but which is weird because they've had their hands on like a lot of good players recently, it's just not really able to do much with them. Jalen, you follow baseball at all? I do not. I, I'm not a big fan of baseball. I I tried to play once and then it's not for me. You so. just you just stick to uh, football and basketball. Definitely, it was just basketball until I picked up football in middle school. So, what about NBA? Are you a big fan? Definitely. What do you what do you think about these like LeBron trade rumors? I've been seeing that. I don't I don't think it's true, but you know anything can happen. To be honest, yeah, especially I mean, with him getting old. I think after last night, you see how the Lakers beat the Celtics without LeBron and AD. Austin Reeves dropping thirty two points, seven for ten from the three three point line. I did that. Um, that right work. there. If you're LeBron, you kind of look at that and go, "Well, we got a we got a good team." Maybe I shouldn't leave. But. I don't know. I'll put in a little to a perspective a thing about LeBron. We graduated high school the same year together. And I'm like, man, I'm old. LeBron's old. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's getting time for him to hang it up. I mean, he's still he's still really like a serviceable player, though, you know. I mean, he's top ten in the league right now when it comes to Points plus assists, you know, he's really – he really is doing great for 40 years old. Yeah, when you get to 39 years old, though, there's not much – you're on your last days, you know, in the league. It doesn't matter what sport it is unless it's golf. I mean, we'll, we'll be honest with each other here, you know. LeBron's probably been able to spend a lot more money taking care of his bodies than all four of us. <laughs> yeah, I think that's an understatement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of like when people talk about like the goat debate. Kind of hard to to debate it without mentioning the fact like how far like science has advanced since then. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's your opinion opinion on the uh, goat debate? I like LeBron, but I feel like Michael Jordan was better. To be honest, I agree with that. I just I I disagree. Now I am a Cleveland fan. I'm a you know. But the only reason why I put LeBron over him is I don't think Le- or Jordan's 
resume without a top 75 teammate is as good as LeBron's. You didn't live in the 90s. I mean, I w- in, 20- in 2018, I saw LeBron take a Cavs team with the starting lineup of Larry Nance Jr., Jordan Clarkson, J.R. Smith. Who else? Seti Osman. I saw them take them all the way to the finals, and they lost to the greatest team of, uh, in NBA history. It's called being a team player. Yeah, how many championships did Jordan lose? How many? Well, you have to look at it the other way. Like Jordan played fifteen years; he also missed like nine t- missed the playoffs nine times. Yeah, and he was drafted to the worst team in nineteen eighty four. He also did retire to play. Baseball. LeBron was drafted by the worst twice. team in the, in the uh, NBA. Yeah. The year LeBron left the Cavaliers for the Heat, um, the Cavs were the number one team in the East, and they dropped all the way to the worst team in the NBA. So they only won like nine games that year, didn't they? Yeah, it was, like that, yeah. it was a pitiful season by the Cavs. I'm just saying, I didn't see I didn't see uh, LeBron playing Julie baseball for the White Sox. Yeah, I remember as a kid uh, when Jordan switched over, played for the Barons. They played down here in Knoxville. And when he was in double A and they were, they were lined up, I think for six or seven hours, people waiting to try to get his autograph. That must be weird. You're playing baseball. How many people come up to you with a basketball to sign it? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, just hypothetically here, let's say that NBA wiped every single roster and they made you a GM of a team and you had to get first pick in the draft. Who are you getting? Wait, so how about how about we do this? We all have to get a start in five. We'll go in draft order. Four of us. Is this current players? Yeah. Okay. Who goes first? Jalen, you're the guest. You start. Yeah. Um, yeah, I already know who I'm taking, so I'm taking KD first. I'll go fourth. Really, I don't even watch basketball that much, but honestly, I'll probably take uh, probably Shea. I want Andre Ig- I'm no, no, I'm taking I'm taking Giannis. I'll go Curry. I'll take Jokic. Ooh, I'll take Embiid. Ooh, a lot of good players off the board. Um, I'll take. Uh, for my shooting guard, I'm gonna take Devin Booker. This one will be a little controversial, but I'll go John Morant. Ooh, <laughs> sharpshooter. I'll take Damian Lillard. Then I'm at one. I think at the three, there's only there's only one that's kind of you know this it's a scoring team that I'm building. Kind of need some defense. I'm going Kawhi. Ooh, great, great pick. Um, for my point guard, I think uh, I'll take LeBron at my three. Let's see, Jaron Jackson Jr.'s play center, right? Yeah. I'll go with him and keep it with the Grizzlies. Yeah, I, I'm taking James Harden then at my two. Ooh, dang. This, honestly, I'm taking the unsung hero of the league right now, Kate Cunningham, at my two. Uh, Center. I'm taking Wimby. I know it's early, but he's got longevity. That's not a bad pick. I get to the forwards now, and I'm like, hmm. Julius Randle? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Of. OG Ananobi? I only need a, a power forward. I don't know. Scotty Barnes. Jimmy Butler. Yeah, Scotty Barnes is a good one. I'll go with that. I'm taking uh, Paul George at my three again. Ooh. You need somebody that's going to die about this. I'm taking Draymond. Okay. Do we get a six man? We can do that. Yeah, we can do that. I'm We're only on the fifth one right now, though. So, okay, so I, I'm missing a point guard. Who's still on the board? A lot. I know. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. So the shit. whole league. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking this, but I think Jamal Murray maybe. It's a good pick. I like that. I'll take Jamal Murray. I'm trying to think of my team on uh, 2K right now. <laughs> Let's see. Nah, I didn't know we got access to the roster. 
I'm yeah, just looking up you teams. guys are cheating. I already got my six man in mind. So. I got my six man. Uh, I gotta keep it real, you know. University of Tennessee, Grant Williams. I know, you know, he's not elite or anything, but that's good enough for me. I, I have confidence, bro. How did I fumble? I, I, my six man. I'm gonna take Tyrese Maxey. I feel like he's he's slept on right now, especially that you just dropped 51 last night. You think Tyrese Maxey. You think of what I'm thinking? Honestly, my six. Oh my gosh! Actually, I'm gonna switch it out. I'm gonna put. Jason Tatum at the four and put Draymond at the six. Draymond? Yeah, I'm going to stick with Draymond. I don't care. I'm putting Jamal on the bench, and I'm taking Luka as my point guard. <laughs> we all forgot. How did we forget? Yeah, for, how, how did, did you guys? <laughs> Luka. Yeah, Let's right. see. I mean, this is actually tough right off the top of your head. Oh, uh, let's... I'm, the last, I'm the last one. What yeah, are you I'm missing? Yeah. No, six man. That's it. You got uh, Anthony Edwards right now playing good. Yeah. Um, I'll tell. You, I'll Terry Rozier, the third. Ooh, scary Terry. What do you think about that trade from my, uh, Miami getting acquiring Terry Rozier? When was this? A couple, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I didn't even know about it. Yeah, he's. Yeah. Kind of been playing pretty good for the Heat. I mean, the Heat kind of needed a little bit of a kickstart on offense, and I think Terry Rozier with that three ball kind of gets it done. No, I didn't have a clue about it. I've been so busy doing stuff, I hadn't even had time to read the NBA news. Man, I think the Heat have the Dodgers curse. They can't make, they can't win anything. Who do you guys think had the best team just now? I don't know. We'd have to stick it on 2K or something. Like Probably that. Jay Stoles. He's got. Yeah, I would guy. agree with that. that team, Jay yeah. Stoles. What do you mean, Giannis and Braun and Luca? James Harden, Paul George, Kevin Durant, Jokic, Dame. You, you have the Clippers 2.0. <laughs> it's, it's, a good team. it's a good team. In my opinion. Sneaky. I mean, Jokic and KD together. I got a legit All Star squad. But uh, yeah, right now. A lot of things going on in the NBA. Pretty interesting. I kind of feel like the season's a little long. Like, I don't know. What do you think about the length of the season? I mean, when you look as a high school basketball player, you know, how do you feel if you had to play 82 games? I wouldn't know how it would work, to be honest, because I think 30 is not a lot, I mean, especially when it's going by slow. But I feel like playing 82, it's – that's just a lot for a high school player, I feel like. Do you feel like the high school season for basketball goes by quick or slow? First half is very quick because they're trying to put it, they're trying to push in games and get a lot done before Christmas break. Because I think we had, I think we had two weeks back to back. We were playing three games a week, and they're just trying to get games in there. So after the season, or like after Christmas, it can go slow. So I yeah, think it's pretty fast. I know for us, it feels like it goes by quick, or at least it does for me when we commentate. It's like. You look at the calendar and it's like, whoa, three games this week. And then the next week, it's like, oh, two games this week. It seems like and then no everything games this week. revolves around basketball. <laughs> and it's awesome. But it just seems like, I don't know, basketball makes it go by so much quicker. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, dude. As like a, a commentator, like, it's, it's a weird feeling because, like, I'm not, I know I'm not like on the court with you guys, but it feels like I'm, I'm, kind of part of the team a little bit you know i'm able to talk to you guys and sort of you know i always go up to you and dj and blaine and i and i like talking to you guys before each game so that way i i sort of have a little bit of a knowledge before going into it and uh like i said it's just you guys are awesome and uh i really appreciate you know you you coming on here today um but until next time this is the northview sports podcast